Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about a cool new feature coming to the MT32 Pi project, updates to the Konami CPU, more about the secret core being developed by the PlayStation Core developer, and more. So let's get to it. I have a video that shows you how to build your own emitters for the GunCon 3 light gun, but there are also some vendors that are offering third party ones for sale. Laser Bear Industry is now taking pre-orders for the GunCon 3 IR towers. There are two options. You can purchase an $18 kit where you build them yourself. This includes soldering. Or you can purchase them pre-assembled for $32. You will still need to provide USB cables to connect and power them. The actual GunCon 3 light guns can be found for a decent price without the emitters. Including the emitters, they can be pretty expensive. This will give you the options to save some money. I recently posted a video regarding the recent updates to the Mr. Framework for S-Video and Composite. This video focuses on using the active adapter designed by Mike Simone with an analog I.O. board. I also do some image quality comparisons between Composite, S-Video, and Component Connections. In the future, I will also be releasing videos on the same subject that focuses on direct video and being able to accomplish the same thing using only off-the-shelf cables. Dopefish, the developer of the MT32 Pi project, will soon make the MT32 Pi usable as a class compliant MIDI and audio recording device. What this means is that you will be able to plug in an MT32 Pi device to your computer and it will detect it as a sound card and MIDI device. No need for intermediary programs for your PC to communicate with the MT32 Pi. You can then use it with your favorite digital audio workstation just like you would any other class compliant MIDI and audio device. This will only work with the Pi 02 and Pi 3A Plus devices. This shouldn't change the way you're currently using the MT32 Pi with the Mr. FPGA, but this could mean that cores that support MIDI link could use the MT32 Pi when connected through the standard USB ports instead of the serial USB port of the Mr. I can confirm that it will work this way, but if you take a look at the MIDI Link Mr. GitHub page, it states that MIDI Link is a daemon for the Mr. DE10 Nano FPGA to allow ALSA supported USB MIDI adapters to be used with the Mini MIG and AO486 cores. I will definitely be testing this out once the feature is implemented on the MT32 Pi project. Cotego posted some updates on the Konami CPU work. It looks like it was a good experience for his team working on the CPU and he won't be so hesitant to tackle other CPU designs. He has a set deadline for March 24 to finish a functional CPU. This isn't a full arcade core, but just a CPU portion that can be used for multiple cores. After the functional CPU is complete, another week will be used for debugging on an actual core, with Haunted Castle being the first game. Haunted Castle is a great game to start off with because it uses the same video logic as Contra and other games. And Hotego's team has already developed modules for them a long time ago, so they can be reused and work can focus on the CPU. Other games that use the CPU are The Simpsons and Aliens, but as far as I know, core development for those games has not been announced yet. Robert Pipe, who's worked on many cores, including the PlayStation Core, has given another update regarding the secret core he's developing. Audio is now implemented. On Patreon, he posted an audio clip of the current software emulator for the core, playing a cover of a popular song from a PlayStation game. It's unknown if the emulator is playing an audio file of the song or if it's doing some MIDI-like sample playback. It sounds pretty high quality, so I'm thinking the system might be from the generation after the Super NES and Sega Genesis. You can read more details regarding sound and listen to the audio on the Patreon post. Robert also gives more information on the progress of the other components of the core. Mike Simone has updated a whole bunch of cores to use with the new framework and also with aspect ratio updates. The framework updates allow these cores to use S-Video and Composite if they output standard TV refresh rates. Since there are so many games that were updated, I won't repeat them here, but you can pause the video or visit the link in the description to read the full list. So that's it for this week's episode. I provide the links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro related content. And if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos.
Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.